Hello there and welcome back to another review. So we've got some more Jackie Chan uh, coming at you here today. We're going to be looking at Gorgeous, um, released here by 88 Films. And I really do love uh, that cover. 88 Films really, um, probably more so than Eureka um, in terms of their artwork and their sleeve packaging, I think. Um, so the artwork is, I think, it's incredible. Like, I, if you remember, I love the God of Gamblers one. Uh, their Magic Cop one's really good. There's just there's too many to mention actually in terms of 88 films and their artwork. But we're going to be looking at Gorgeous uh, here today. Um, so after Jackie like broke into the American market with Rumble in the Bronx by Stanley Tong, and he made Rush Hour by Brett Ratner, and of course with Chris Tucker, Jackie went back to Hong Kong to try his hand at something different. And at this point in Jackie Chan's career, he was pretty much tired of sort of playing the same old type of guy, um, the same type of guy that, you know, the typical underdog. You know, after so long, if you're an actor or anybody involved in the movies, you're going to want a change of scene, right? You're going to want to venture out, show the audience you can play other roles. Jackie had played other roles sort of here and there, like Crime Story, a lot more serious. Um, but at this point, Jackie Chan had pretty much done what he wanted to do. He had conquered America. He had like, established himself. He was a big, you know, uh, box office star, box office draw. So, as I say, he was saying, look, I've been playing the same guy on camera, give or take, for the past 25 years or so. This is Jackie starting to get the shackles off and venture into roles that would be a vast um, sort of departure for him. He was always like sort of advised, especially by people like Leonard Hose, to play what the audience wants. Jackie had left Golden Harvest as well at this point. And when Gorgeous come out in 1999, this was when Jackie... Um, wasn't selling out as such, but this to me was when Jackie became big, uh, big in terms of like Western audiences and suddenly sort of everyone knew or I spoke to was into Jackie Chan or was a Jackie Chan fan. Now, there's sort of rumble in the Bronx obviously was the turning point when Jackie sort of really uh, made his mark um, sort of on the American market, thanks to, you know, largely to Stanley Tong. But um, after Russia was when it really, um, as I say, if not that he, I, I didn't view it that he sold out, um, but as I say, it was just suddenly everybody that was never into Jackie Chan before was all of a sudden into Jackie Chan. I don't know if any of you out there sort of know what I'm talking about. It's almost like a, a very, like Jackie before that was sort of almost a very niche thing, uh, sort of if you was into Jackie Chan, uh, but it seemed like everybody and anybody, oh, new Jackie Chan movie, like so everybody knew who he was all of a sudden. I believe this film was originally only had Chan on board as sort of a producer, but as the film and script progressed, it turned into more, look like more of a Jackie Chan movie. But make no mistake, this is Jackie trying his hand at a romantic comedy, and I think it's impossible to hate Gorgeous. I think, um, uh, I think, I remember when it come out, people, uh, Jackie Chan's new film is Gorgeous, and people saying, oh, that title's got to change. That can't be the title of the movie. And it's like, no, it is called Gorgeous. Um, the bad, like in this movie, like the bad guys aren't really that bad. Everyone in this has personalities. You get two great bouts with the amazing uh, Brad Allen. You, you get the forever lovely Shu Ki, and the whole film is so so innocent and like with miracles it's not so much like jackie Ch chan fans sort of necessarily wanted miracles um but it was sort of or like sort of some, not a film they sort of asked for or wanted but you get the impression it's pretty much a film i think jackie chan sort of had to make to sort of really go against the type of films he has made before and to the and like to the audience there are more strict like show the audience there's more strings to his bow and what he can achieve and that he's more of a because miracles like i say fans are so divided about miracles some people love it some people think it's like quite bloated and it's not but i, I mean i absolutely adore miracles and i know jackie chan himself absolutely thinks it's some of the best work he's ever done um, but miracles was you can you got the sense it was very much a labor of love for Jackie Chan I think gorgeous is pretty much uh, the same it was it was a film you get the impression that Jackie Chan was fully on board I think he even was quoted as saying like rush hour was just a job but gorgeous was like his baby it was a film that he really wanted to make um, so um, I think we all know the character of C.N. Chan uh, in this movie was largely based on Jackie Chan himself, or at least a high percentage of the character is taken from Chan, even to the kind of clothes he was wearing at the time. See, as much as I loved Rush Hour, I would always take Gorgeous over that movie. Um, you have to forgive me, like I say, if you are fans of Rush Hour, but I would always take... Um, 
gorgeous over Russia, solely because this is obviously a much more, as I mentioned, personal film to Jackie. I think him going as far as to say, like, you know, when Rush Hour, I, I don't think Jackie himself was necessarily a fan. I think he loved working with Chris Tucker, but I don't think necessarily, I definitely, definitely like in Hong Kong, it wasn't a, a big deal for them. But Rush Hour sort of, as I say, just made Jackie Chan even more huge um, uh, than what he was anyway. I just remember that around this time, that like Rush Hour had been made, Matrix had come out, Crouching Tiger was around at this time, Jackie was getting mega big, and it seemed, like I mentioned, everyone was just getting into kung fu and that is why i was so so pleased in a peace of mind like jackie was um when he was going to continue to do hong kong movies i was like oh no he's just going to do because some of jackie's american efforts have they're not they haven't all been great let's be honest i think you probably know some of the films i'm talking about <laughs> tuxedo but the by and large a lot of the time americans uh, sort of the western sort of when he was working in sort of the american films he wasn't always necessarily put in the right movies. He wasn't necessarily even up to very recently. He doesn't always. He, he doesn't always like you think. Oh, what? Why is Jackie like? They don't necessarily know uh, all the time what to do. With Jackie Chan, Spy Next Door is another one. But um, I was so pleased that he was going to continue to make a Hong Kong movies, strict for the fact he had like more control. Uh, special mention should also obviously go to Brad Allen. I mean, what a talented guy! Uh, what a phenomenal talent this guy was. Um, he worked on films like Hellboy Two, Scott Pilgrim, and he was the first non-Asian member of the Jackie Chan stunt team. And just all round, what an amazing performer, martial artist, and uh, he's a he's gorgeous. Is a real testament. Uh, to Brad Allen and his uh, fighting abilities and just like I say a real uh, real talent I say a real testament to him which is worth it's worth seeing gorgeous for just but I mean forget Jackie Chan see this film for Brad Allen alone and you'll see just what an amazing uh, so amazing performer he actually was so what it, what a trip it is to be watching this film again um, right away. This you know this it start the way it starts and you see the production values, you get the CGI on the fish, the music. Right away you know this is going to be a very 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 different uh, Jackie Chan movie to sort of what you're accustomed to at that point. So we meet Boo, played by Shuki, living in like a fishing village with her folks who own like a bar on like Chibay Island. For some reason the music from this film, I don't know why. I'd prove to me what a geek I am, but it sort of reminds me of sort of Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII type music in this movie. I don't know why, um, but just some of the music, even sort of Final Fantasy X vibes, uh, some of the music cues in this just sounds like something out of a Final Fantasy game. But anyway... Long Yi, a guy who loves Boo, progress, like progresses, uh, like he sort of um, progresses, like to sort of propose to her uh, with like an oyster. We find out Boo's mum left Hong Kong to be with her dad in Taiwan. So randomly one day, Boo finds a message in a bottle about this guy called Albert and says he is in Hong Kong. She lets the dolphins decide like, if she should settle for Long Yi or take a chance on the letter. So randomly, she is on a plane. Like, no goodbyes or anything like that. She's just, next shot you see her, she's on this plane, right? She can just up and go. So then we meet Chan, and his name is Chan in this movie, so we won't get confused. So usually, sometimes when I've reviewed movies in the past, I probably trip over some of the names or I get certain names wrong here and there. But with this film, it's quite easy because Tian Chan, Jackie Chan, he is Chan. Uh, so this is a guy who has it all. He's wealthy. He owns a recycling company. And I can't, like I say, stress enough, there is no way on earth Ch like Chan would have done anything as bold as this movie in the 80s. And that is what's so amazing about this film. Yes, it's sweet. Yes, it's charming. Yes, it's romantic. But it's a, it's bold as hell uh, at the same time. For a Jackie Chan movie especially, it is bold. It is a really bold movie. So he is all about stocks and making a profit. They make a point that he is single and above all else wants to find someone who is like amusing. Sort of elements here and there of sort of the Thomas Crown affair and they're just like sort of no heist or robbery. But he's sort of that kind of like guy. He's got it all. He's got money, but he just can't. You know, his life has become pretty tame. Uh, he's sort of going through the motions. Uh, we meet Tony Leung here as Albert, who is sort of gay and works as a model, makeup artist and photographer. Look out for cameos uh, from Stephen Fung and Daniel Wu here when they're doing this like this uh, photo shoot on the boat. So Boo spots um, Chan being ambushed by Lo Lewa, his business rival, who says Chan has been dating his girl and Chan wants his stock. Uh, look out for a bald Ken Lo here as one of the goons too. He wants an apology and I love how this guy is like, he's the villain, but he's not that evil. Uh, like they throw Chan overboard, but... <clears throat> 
it's like to prove how like evil he is but not evil like they throw chan overboard um like he's like toss him overboard but at the same time they throw him a life boy so it's like you know we're throwing overboard but make sure you know make sure he, he's going to be all right like he'd say he's evil but not evil so a fight breaks out in the boat and it's not believe you and me this is not dragons forever in terms of the speed and the aggression and the sound effects used are sort of lacking a little bit but i think that was the idea to make the hits sound and seem gentle in this movie like the fights you get two amazing bouts with Brad Allen, but like this fight on the boat, it's like I say, compared to sort of the Dragons Forever fight, there's, as I say, it's very sort of like, let's say the, the blows when they Jackie Chan hits anybody, it's quite a soft uh, with the sound effects they use. To make, as I say, I think it's to make the hit sound and seem gentle. And I love that they aren't meant to kill Chan, and at one point they're using like a harpoon gun. Uh, Boo takes a speedboat to rescue Chan, and they end up sort of crashing. And listen to the piano on this scene too, when they're sort of stranded. And it, it really is a great score uh, that goes on throughout the movie, that really suits the movie uh, really well, and I say really does play uh, along with the movie um, really nicely. Boo and Chan start talking about what they like and hate and are rescued by a rowing team. Have to love how Jackie just ditches his butler to give Boo a ride uh, in his two-seater. Like, he's ready to impress her right away. He's ready to lay on his, like, look, you know, he's ready to work the Chan magic, work the CN Chan magic. He shows her around his crib and he's all smitten right away, watching her eat, etc. He tells her what he does and she leaves when he's looking um, when he's looking as there is sort of uh, when he isn't looking because there's she sort of ups and leaves because there's sort of connection enough she sort of i think she sort of like panics and she sort of you know just leaves have to love how tony lung uh with all the fruit in his face giving her the gossip about him from magazines saying he's like a womanizer long Yi turns up the guy who's sort of proposing to boo um at the start of the movie he sort of turns up and some people think he is chow yun fat uh with like lines like have you finished films in in hollywood uh, but they're actually sort of stealing his bag. I will get round to reviewing more uh, Chow Yun-Fat. I will get round to looking at some of his uh, American uh, movies as well, like Replacement Killers, The Corrupt with Mark Wahlberg. I haven't seen The Corruptor for ages, but um, yeah, I digress. Um, and I love when Tony is in the lift after vandalising Chan's and the door keeps opening and closing like he's trying to escape, but he keeps the lift door keeps on opening and shutting. He, he's got this worried look on his face, but he's not going anywhere. Um so Boo is trying to make Chan believe she is the girlfriend of a mob boss. She gets Tony's friend to sort of uh, fake threaten her and then, then some like... Um sort of Albert's friend, sorry, sort of, um, and then some real baddies turn up with the baseball bats, just Chan doing his thing, and make no mistake, the fights and brawls in this are extremely, like I say, light-hearted, they really are um, light-hearted, absolutely amazing and hilarious cameo as well from Stephen Chow and his dog Sonny, <laughs> just, this dog just doesn't listen to Stephen Chow, and if you look at some of the outtakes here uh, with Jackie Chan and Shuki, they, they just can't stop laughing with Stephen Chow, and he's, just, I say, he's, only, he's literally blinking you miss it cameo, but it's, it's still was the show really uh Stephen chow um so i so say you got this dog sunny and it's just funny the thing is with jackie chan's character in this is that he isn't very likable unfortunately i know he's sort of based on jackie chan but his character isn't overly sort of uh, likable not the most exciting character in the world that he's ever played like when they're talking about stocks and shares it isn't the most ex exciting stuff in the world so Lo Le Wa's main scheme is to hire a fighter from overseas to challenge Chan because Chan wants to buy his company. Makes sense, right? Just hire a fighter. He wants to buy my company. I'm going to get an overseas fighter to sort of take him out. Long Yi rants when he finds another bottle that Albert threw out uh, with a message. He goes to Albert's place and just misses Boo, who has gone on a date with Chan. Uh, Lo, in, like Ken Lo interrupts their date and wants to know why um, Ken Lo and sort of... Um, Lolo, while well, they sort of interrupt their day and want to know why she's like sort of uh, she's dumping the price of the company's share. A uh, funny in joke with his men always getting his hand signals wrong as well. And he's probably like the like I mentioned, the nicest bad guy ever. I'd say he's evil, but he's not evil at all. But I'd say he's a very, I'd say again, a lot of um, uh, characters in this do steal the show. And you get, I'd say, you get a real uh, nice assortment of people here. Um, as I say, but it's say funny in joke that he's men, he says, always getting his uh, hand, they're always getting his hand signals wrong. Um, played by, I think, Wacken Chow or Emil Chow um, is how you pronounce his name. But anyway, like, he's so funny, like, when he can't stop laughing, when he's introducing Chan to, like, Brad Allen, he's like, I finally got him, and him and Ken Lowe are sort of cracking up. They can't stop laughing because it's like, right, he's going to get beaten up now. Uh, so we, here we get the first of two fights uh, with Brad Allen. And I always remember 
Brad doing a lot of the stunt double work uh, for the end fight in Who Am I? I don't know if any of you out there have, uh, remember seeing Jackie Chan, my stunts. Uh, the guy Jackie Chan was fighting in that at the end of Who Am I? He couldn't get the rhythm right with the fight scene. So Brad Allen had to come in and double uh, quite a, an extensive amount of sort of the leg and footwork. He's always, I, think, I think his first movie with Chan might have been Mr. Nice Guy. I think he was, the, he think that's sort of where he started uh, with Chan. But Brad Allen's also featured quite predominantly in uh, Jackie Chan, my stunts as well and it's worth checking out if you haven't seen Jackie Chan my stunts um so now I absolutely loved this fight when I first saw it and thank god um these fights are in there as without them it would hinder the film somewhat and it is nice that we get to not just one but two great butt fights with uh, Jackie Chan Chan knew he had to have a great fighter in the movie and at the time I was like now this is more like it compared to say what we got in Russia like that finally we're getting you know I was so pleased Jackie Chan was back in Hong Kong he's still doing the great fight sequences not only that but I say you get two of them here so Chan gets beat and then we have a whole montage of him and Boo spending time together as he trains. This And this was when I would say Chan hit a bit of a weird patch with films as he had pretty much conquered the American market. He did regain ground but I think the US by and large, like I mentioned, didn't know what kind of films to put Jackie in. You only need to look at films like I mentioned, The Tuxedo. When you see Chan work out in this movie you really do see what amazing shape he is in as well at this point. Really physically in a great place. Albert now has like Long Yi and Boo living with him. Though Long Yi is completely wasted now but has to hide boo in the fridge so after seeing chan with another girl and realizing like you like he knew she was lying about being a mobster's girlfriend she breaks down it really is a heartwarming performance here from shu ki and suddenly just like before she is randomly on the plane on the plane like so she just gets on these planes just like that like a drop of a hat brad comes to chan and that's very quick that's all that really happens between the two fights um between brad allen so brad comes to challenge chan again and finds chan sulking uh, ken low is now broke and he's goons are lots sort of worried they might lose their job um and so and like low is, sorry low is broke not ken low get confused because i think the main guy's sort of low and then there's ken low as well so i'm just again tripping over myself like i say so his goons are sort of worried they might lose their job brad brad allen now has to have smaller gloves as chan has been like training and so chan overcomes allen by sort of lightening up and sort of smiling more as i say i absolutely loved these fights when i first saw them you really do get quite a long fight here in the second bout um allen in particular really getting to show off his moves especially his speed and leg work not to mention his punches and was a great chance uh, Chan gave him not just fighting skills but also as well comedic as well they do uh, Brad Allen does get to show off some comedic elements here as well and it's just nice that he's very much front and center uh, with uh, say the sort of the fights in this movie so Lau, Lau is now trying to set fire to himself and Chan's stock as he thinks he is finished. Chan gives him a speech about how polystyrene is bad for the environment and they should work together. Chan apparently is still mad at him for stealing his childhood girlfriend Chong Lei Chen and he tells Chan about his ex Mary and how they laughed together and had such great times which makes uh, Chan think of Boo. Boo now back in Taiwan. Albert and Long Yi turn up who basically gets his heart broken I might add. Like Long Yi basically just... He, that not in with a chance at all and this guy all he did was sort of love boo um chan turns up and boo's dad basically tells him to leave her alone even pushing him into tables slapping him chan has brought her some like clay pot rice and shows her all the bottles he sent with a note saying how much he loves her and misses her and he says he likes her not loves her uh, likes her and sort of her wish has come true long he does find love in a neighbor ends with chan and boo sort of waving to the dolphins you do actually see them you think okay they're meant to be in love because like they, they they don't actually say love they did like it's jackie chan after all but he says like i really like you i like you a lot but you think you don't see them kiss but if you keep watching the movie at the end of the credits you actually do uh, see them kiss again even even with this film jackie was still very careful he didn't want to upset his female fans i know one of them in the past that like sort of committed suicide or um there was but there was some uh, sort of uh, bad things that happened with some of his sort of hardcore fans but as i say even just with that one quick like, one kiss in this movie it was still a bit all oh, risque for jackie chan so you do see a kiss at the end of the but a real, as I say, a real harmless Jackie Chan film, and one you could watch with the kids, very charming and harmless, no classic by any means, but a very light-hearted film. But to me, um, you know, with all its charm, with all its great performances in the movie, Brad Allen uh, is the real star uh, with Gorgeous, and like I mentioned, it's worth checking out for a very different Jackie Chan movie, a very heartwarming, light-hearted Jackie Chan movie, but a real testament to uh, sort of the talent uh, that was 
uh, Brad Allen. So if you have seen Gorgeous, let me know. If it's one of your favorite Jackie Chan films, um, leave a comment in the uh, box below. So yeah, check out Gorgeous if you haven't seen it. Really worth seeing, but a very different Jackie Chan film. And this is when Jackie Chan was just trying something different, trying to venture out more and to try uh, something new. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. Take care. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.